Okay. Chapter 7. Okay. Chapter 7. Advanced option strategies. Okay, there are many different types of advanced option strategies. All right, many different types. The two that we're going to study are spreads. <coughs> spreads and combinations. Okay, so we're going to have a couple of sections on spreads, like one hour on spreads and one hour on combinations. So, 7 1 spreads. What is a spread? A spread is Long one option and short an option of the same time, of the same type. So a spread could be long call plus short call, or it could be. Long put plus a short put. Okay. Well, these two calls are different calls, and these two puts are different puts. So, <coughs> it may be a call with a different strike. A call with a different strike. It's called horizontal spread horizontal spread will have the same maturity in different strikes So, it's going to have x1 and x2, different strikes, same maturity. Or vertical. And vertical spread will have the same strike, but different maturities. D1. And T2. So, how do we note the spread? We note the spread by first designating the long and then designating the short. So, we are long 120, meaning with a strike of 120 and short 130 call okay 120 130 call <coughs> is actually a spread being long 120 call and short 130 call okay or for the vertical spread it's going to be and when you say call we well let's just say 
July call, okay? So, 120 July call long, 130 July call short. And here it's going to be July, June, 125 call. So, this is a horizontal spread long 120 July call and short 130 July call. This is a vertical spread long July 125 call and short June 125 call. Your long and the long call with this 120 is more expensive than this one. So 120 call more expensive. You have net cash outflow. So we say you buy. You buy the spread. You buy the spread when initially, when you initiate the spread, you have a cash outflow. When you buy the spread, we say that you, it's a debit spread, debit. Here, The July call is more expensive than the June, so this is also a debit spread. Debit spread. July costs more than June. So, <coughs> the June, July, 125 call is a credit spread. In other words, in this we say you're long the spread, and in this we say you're short the spread, but we don't use long and short because every spread means always have one long and always have one short always so you can't say I'm long the spread you say I buy the spread or it's a debit spread okay long is meaningless because you always have a long and always have a short okay so you say you buy the spread or sell the spread so credit spread means sell the spread Okay, so that's the one simple thing. The second simple thing, which is again elementary logic for children, which is buying and selling are mirror images of each other, mirror image. Whatever is for buying, the exact opposite is for selling. Okay? Everything positive is negative, everything negative is positive. Whatever it is, it's gotta be, it has to be the exact mirror image. <coughs> One being the exact opposite of the other. Okay? So we can only discuss buying the spread, and then the exact opposite will be true for selling the spread. Okay. From these, you have the next basic concept, which is a bull spread. And a bull spread is a spread which gains when the price goes up. When the underlying goes up. And you gotta
bear spread when the price goes down. We got the notation, everything's good. There is a possibility that you might have instead of two, you have three options or four options, okay? So, in this chapter, you may have, right now spreads have only two options, long and a short. But it's possible to have three or four options. If that's the case, you're going to have strikes of x1, x2, x3, x4, okay? These will be the strikes. You may have time one, time two, time three, time four, and so on, okay? So, if it's two options, you're gonna have two times or two strikes, okay? If it's three, you may have three. If it's four, you may have four, okay? So, these spreads, we use only two. All right, number two, seven, two. Seven two is called money spread. And money spread is exactly the same as horizontal spread. And a horizontal spread will respectively have seven two one. It's going to be bull spread. So, a bull spread will be long, it's going to be call your long with x1 t, so your long a call with the lower strike, minus means short call with a higher strike. We say that x1 is less than x2. That will be a bull spread, okay? And of course, you can have a Bear spread with calls, you're gonna have bear spread with puts. Let's do it right this call x1 t, it's gonna be x2 t minus call x1 t, again x1 less than x2. So you are along the one with the lower strike and short the one with the higher strike and let's see what happens for all spreads for all advanced option strategies the result is the sum of the components so we draw this component we draw that component and basically see what happens. What happens with the one? What happens with the other? Let's draw and take a look at the picture. And the picture looks like this. If you're along a call, if you're along a call, the long call will have this part. This is the long call. This is what a long call looks like, okay? But the short call means that it's going to 
truncate your profit. So you have a, let's say, 120 call July 120 call July 130. So as the price of the stock goes above 120, you begin to gain, 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 okay? And once it reaches 130, you can't gain anymore. You gain on the one call, but you lose on the other call. So when the price is 130, 140, 150, 160, exactly what you gain on the one call, exactly that much lose on the other call. So you get truncated. You got a maximum loss. You got a maximum loss. And a maximum gain. And somewhere in the middle, not exactly, somewhere in the middle, you're going to be breaking even. Somewhere in the middle, you're going to be breaking even. So what happens is very simple. You have a limited loss. You have a limited loss. You, lose, you can at most lose a little. And have at the same time limited gain. Okay? So with a bull spread, you aren't going to make a lot of money out of it. But you aren't going to lose a lot of money out of it, okay? So you still bet on the upside, okay? You still bet on the upside. You're going to make money if it goes up, but you aren't going to be able to make a lot of money if you're right. But you aren't going to lose a lot of money if you're wrong, okay? So you limit your loss and you limit your gain, okay? So that can happen when you expect a relatively small move and at the same time you don't want to take a big risk, okay? So this part over here, this part is the bull part. This is the bull part. You will gain from the lower strike. And this is you sell. So if, if you buy this for $10 and you sell this for $6, your maximum risk is 4 So this is lowers risk. Lower risk. So instead of losing all the money, you instead of losing all the $10, you pocket back 6 you lose only at most four, okay? So, this is the bull gain reduction. This is where you get your return if you're right. And this is where you lower your risk. But this not only lowers the risk, this also lower return. So, if if the price goes far into the money, you won't be able to get a lot because this also cuts off your gain. Okay? So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. This is the return part on the upside and this is the risk reduction on the downside. Lowers the risk and lowers the return. And it is used to initiate a lower cost call. Well, that's it. Now, let's see what happens. Limited gain, limited loss. Uh, let's try and do the time. 
Uh, the time goes like this. Early on when you initiate, well, let's go. Right before expiration, it's like this. It goes over here. It goes very close. It's going to it's going to cross nearby and it's going to move very close. This is close to expiration. Now, if you're far away from expiration, it's going to be more like this. You're going to go like And like this. And early on, it's going to be notice that these three don't have to go across. They don't have to cross each other. They don't have to go through this line. They are near, but they don't have to be exactly the same. It's not necessary to be the same. So as time goes by, As time goes by, you move closer and closer, and closer, okay? So, over time, as time goes by, your overall lose, your overall lose time value. The answer is your overall lose time value because the more expensive, the more expensive call, <coughs> the call with the strike of X1 has more time value in it and usually you're going to be losing time. Okay? <coughs> so, time in a bull spread works against you. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Bear spread, seven, two, two. Let's see how they construct it. Do they construct the bear spread with calls or you may construct the bear spread with Puts. Let's see what's happening here. Oh, they constructed with a put. <coughs> so, here's the thing. You may have a Call bear spread, okay, same call bear spread, you know, have a put bear spread, okay. So, if you construct it with a put, if you construct it with a put, you're going to have a put with a particular time, and you're going to have another short put with exactly the same time, and now you're going to have two strikes. If it's going to be a bare put, you want the higher strike to be long, let me think a little bit, so you got one put right now you're 100 you have one put at 90 and one put okay it's going to be uh, yes at 90 and one put at 80 okay this put is the expensive put and this is the cheap put. So you want to be long the expensive. This gives you better protection, okay? And you want to be short. So 
this is going to be x2 is going to be x1. This is going to be higher side. This is going to be lower side. So you put in x2, and this is going to be x1. So you're long a put with a higher strike, and short a put with a lower strike. So for the calls, you get lower strike, higher strike. With the puts, it's the opposite. You got a higher <coughs> strike, lower strike. And the picture has to be exactly the same or almost the same. And the picture is exactly the same follows from the put call parity. So if this is the one picture, it should be the exact opposite. It should go like this. We're going to have this. And it's going to be this. OK? So when it goes down, you're going to be gaining more on the expensive foot. And the cheaper one, you're going to be losing on it. And vice versa, the exact, it's the mirror opposite, okay? And now what happens with time? With time, again, you're gonna be like this. Doing, doing, very, very, very close. You're gonna be closing, crossing nearby, nearby, not exactly, nearby. Okay. If you got more time, it's more like this. And early on, it's like this. Is the picture right? Did I get it right? Hmm? Is the picture the way it is? For the bear spread? So this is the bear spread, and that's how you get it. So over time, you're early on, as time moves, you go like this, and over here, you go like this, okay? What's the question, guys? What's the, in the question? Is everything looking good? All right. Now the next one is called a collar. Collar. All right. Let's try to do a collar. See what it is. Seven one seven two two seven two. Well, it's already seven two four. Seven two three. following. First of all, in a collar, you got a stock.
Second, you'll buy protective put. The protective put limits you on the downside. If things go wrong for you, if things go wrong for you, okay, the protective put will help you. It will reduce losses. So, this is risk reduction. But the protective put costs money. It's expensive. So, in order to compensate the protective put, you will have a short call. You will have a short call. Okay. You will have a short call. So, it works like this. <coughs> Stock is 120, okay? You're gonna say buy put at 110. So below 110 you are protected. And then at the same time you're gonna say sell call at 130. Okay? So this function here of selling the call will be low, lower the cost, lower cost. So, you sell the call, you're going to get some money back. So, maybe you sell the, pro you buy the protective put, put for $10 and you're going to sell the call for nine so here call equals nine you get nine dollars okay in here put equals ten you pay ten dollars but you get nine back okay so this limits your loss on the downside and this limits your profit on the upside Okay, so that's what a caller looks like. So a caller will have limited loss. So let's try to draw the picture. You're gonna have a limited loss. No matter what happens, you aren't gonna lose more than whatever is the difference. From 120, you're gonna lose at most the difference between the stock, so we're going to lose at most 10 until we hit the strike, and you're going to lose at, mo at most the cost of protection, the net, we call it net cost of protection. So at most you can lose is 11, that's it, okay? And if it goes up, if it goes up, at certain point your stock's going to go get called away, so you're going to lose everything on the put, you're gonna get some gain some on the stock and that's it. So you're gonna get a limited gain, you're gonna get a limited loss. And now the question what happens in between? In between is linear. Okay. And somewhere over here depending on how expensive is the call or how expensive is the put, the difference between the call and the put will tell you whether it's going to be a little bit above the middle or a little bit below the middle. If they are the same cost, it's going to be exactly the middle, okay? It, it depends, okay? And it also depends on the strikes too, okay? I mean, right now I made it 120, so I made the call to be $10 out of the money and I made the put to be ten dollars out of the money okay but you can make the call 135 okay or we can make the call 125 okay so you're gonna be limiting more or less okay so that's 
pretty much what the color looks like. So, lower cost, and here's the thing, lower cost also means lower return, lower return. In other words, the short call will cut off your return, lower return. Lower top return, return on the top. So, overall, the color is a risk <coughs> reduction strategy. Okay? And the risk reduction strategy is similar, very similar to a call bull spread, okay? That's why we study within the concept of a bull spread. It is essentially kind of like a bull spread with a stock to it, okay? With a stock to it. It's, that's, that's what it is, and that's all. The stock, please pay attention, the stock and the protective put, these two effectively give you a synthetic call, okay? This is the same as a synthetic call. So the caller is composed of a synthetic long call and a short call. That's why it's kind of like the same thing as a spread, as a bull spread. Because these two are effectively a long call. That's why. That's a simple reason. So they're very, very similar because this is basically a synthetic call. It's basically the same thing. Constructed in a different ways. So the put call parity allows you to design and construct different things in a different, well, I mean, having the same output, the same result, the same risk return profile in different ways, either with calls or either with puts. That's why we have here call bear spread and a put bear spread. It's going to give you the same profile and you can use two calls almost the same way and you can use two puts, okay? it's. This follows from the put call parity. Okay, let's see what else we got. Callers, we're done. Uh, oh, time, time, time. The concept of time is exactly the same. You got, if it's very, very close to expiration, you're gonna be very close. And if you're far away from expiration, <coughs> It's going to be like this. Okay? So that's fairly straightforward. Again, the cross is not going to be here. If you look, figure 7 6. Can you open the book on 7 6? You see how it's actually moving a little bit above. A little bit above. And it says, the textbook says, the color is equivalent, that's on page right above the chart, is equivalent to a bull spread plus a risk-free bond. So the difference between a color and a bull spread is the risk-free interest rate on a risk-free bond. All right. Ah, oh, next one. Oh, I'm running out of board. Let's see how I'm going to do this. Well, I've got to start cleaning up the mess. Last one is called butterfly spread. Okay, 722. So, let's see what is a butterfly. The 
This is So, a butterfly spread is simply a bull spread, which is going to make some money on the upside, plus a bear spread. So somehow it's going to be making money on the upside, somehow it's going to be making money on the downside, okay? But the bull spread is limited on the upside, and the bear spread is limited on the downside, okay? So it's a little tricky for what the picture looks like. Somehow you're going to be making money, you're going to be making money on the upside, you're going to be making money on the downside, but not too much. Let's see how it works now. You're going to be making money when you move in the one way, and you're going to be making money moving the other way, but if it moves too far away, it's not really good, okay, if it moves too far away, you're going to make some money on the one, you're going to lose more on the other. So, it goes below like this, it's a little tricky, a little tricky. This is lose money. This here is lose money. Okay? And this here is gain. So We call this type, which I told you a couple of lectures ago, this is a volatility bet. Volatility bet. And this particular bet is a low volatility. Low volatility bet means that if the current price is 130, if the price is 127, 128, or 132, 133, 134, if the price moves little from the current price, in other words, if the volatility is low, you gain. But if the price goes 150, 160, 170, or 50, 60, 70. So, for a wide move, meaning for a big volatility, you lose money. For a low volatility, means you gain money. So, we say in this particular case that your long low volatility, your long low volatility, in other words, you profit if volatility is low. You lose if the profit, pro, pro, uh, volatility is high. So, 
this is a bet whether whether it goes to 131 or 129 it is still making money for you so notice this is a bull spread which gains when you go up okay and at the same time it's a bear spread which gains if you go down so this is not a bull strategy and it's not a bear strategy it's a volatility strategy okay it's a volatility strategy so let's suppose from 130 suppose s0 goes from 130 goes to 131 okay <coughs> if it goes from 130 to 131 you're gonna gain you're gonna gain on the bull spread okay <coughs> and at the same time you're going to lose on the bear spread okay so but here's the trick if it goes from 130 to 131 you're gonna gain on the bull spread more they're gonna lose on the bear spread okay by going up one dollar your call is going to rise in price more than your put is going to fall. Okay? That's a general property. Your R130. Okay? So, you got to put with a strike of 125, you got a call of 135. Okay? Well, here's the trick. Here, when you move on the upside, the delta will be 0.6 of the call. The delta of the call is going to be 0.6. And here, the delta of the put is going to be 0.5. It is a general property of calls and Puts, okay, it's a general property of calls and puts the way we construct them that as you move on the way up You're going to be gaining a lot more. You're going to be gaining a lot more on the calls, okay? And you're going to be losing less on the puts But once you move away in this direction you move to 127 It's going to be the opposite Suddenly if you start moving away here your puts gonna rise rapidly to 0.7 and this is gonna fall to 0.5 so once you move in the upward direction the delta of the call increases the delta of the put rises so one dollar on the move up will give you more gaining from the calls than losing from the puts but again if you start moving down from 130 to 127 to 125, it's going to be the exact opposite. You're going to start gaining more on the puts and losing relatively less on the calls. In other words, the delta changes for the call. As you move up, you gain more. And the opposite is for the put. So you will select them so that the deltas are more or less equal. If you start moving more, the calls will be gaining faster and the puts will be losing less and less. But if you move in the opposite direction, the puts going to be gaining faster and the call will be losing less. So in either direction, you're going to be making money. Okay, you're going to be making money. But at the same time, you're going to be making more on the one than losing on the other. Okay. And over time, if you move far away, then your losses are going to be a lot more because now, you know, 
but I want to get into that at this point. So the, the tricky idea is to understand this part over here about the gain, okay? Now, what about the loss? The loss is fairly simple. The loss is fairly simple to understand. If you're far, far away, far, far away, okay? If you're far, far away, let's say you're very far away. <coughs> On the bull spread, you got, let's say, x is, sorry, ST, the stock price is 300, 400, 500, very far from X1, X2 from the strike price. What happens is the following. For each call, for each call, time value becomes zero. Time value is zero. For the other call, time value equals zero. Here, for the put, time value equals zero. And this one, time value equals zero. So, in a butterfly, if you move far away, all time values disappear. And all you remain is with the strike prices. Now, because you got a long and a short, long and a short, okay, the strike prices cancel out, all you're left is with the cost, the cost of the bull and the cost with the bear spread, okay? So, all you're left, so you lose a little bit because buying the bull spread and buying the bear spread cost some money, okay? Buying the bull spread, buying the bear spread cost some money. Okay. So, you got a small limited <coughs> loss. Butterfly spread. Small limited. You aren't going to lose a lot of money. You're going to lose very little money. Okay? You got a small limited loss. And you got the respected limited gain. Okay? Small limited loss when the volatility is high. So, when volatility is high, you get a small limited loss when volatility is low. You get a small limited Gain. Okay, this is the gain over here. And that's pretty much it. Well, question is, what about time? Well, with time, look at the curvature. Curvature here is very, very, very close. Then you move somewhere, you cross above, you go over here and then it goes like this. Now we do the blue. The blue is here, 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 here. And finally with the red, it goes like this. Okay. Let's see what we got over here. Probably take a little break. So this is a bull spread and a bear spread. Okay, butterfly is a long bull spread. Let's make sure. Okay. And this is a butterfly, okay? you may have a reverse butterfly.
reverse butterfly or short butterfly. In the reverse or short butterfly, it's going to be the exact opposite, the mirror image. So, it's going to be like this. You're going to have a little bit of a loss, then you're going to gain a lot <coughs> with little, sorry, you're going to lose a lot with little volatility and then little gain, okay? So, you gain, you gain, you lose. So, a short butterfly is a high volatility bet. Or high volatility strategy. Okay? Alright, 10 minutes for you to digest this stuff and think through it. Okay?